rival. This second article charges President Trump with obstructing Congress by blocking witnesses from testifying and not providing documents without a court ordered subpoena. The Democrats need 216 votes to impeach the 45th President of the United States, and they only need to impeach on one of the articles to have Mr. Trump join Andrew Johnson and Bill Clinton as the only presidents to be impeached since the adoption of the Constitution in 1788. Johnson was impeached in 1868, Clinton in 1999. Both of them were acquitted in Senate trials. President speaking right now at a rally in Michigan as we follow this historic vote. Let's start by bringing in Fox News contributor Guy Benson and Fox News chief congressional correspondent Mike Emanuel. Gentlemen, welcome to the conversation. Um, Guy, I'll start with you. At my check now, it's 145, excuse me, 149 yes votes, it looks like. It's changing very quickly as we go. But again, uh, 216 is the number to get to to say they have the impeachment votes in line uh, to get the job done, and then we'll stand by for any final uh, recording of the vote. And look, uh, it seems dramatic, and of course, this is a moment in history, but the outcome has been chiseled in stone for weeks since Speaker Pelosi announced the articles of impeachment were moving forward. She knew that she had the votes at that time. She's a very smart counter of the whip, as they say in Washington, D.C. So this is now just basically putting the dots on the I's and the crossing of the T's on something that we knew was going to happen. It is, in that sense, far less dramatic than, for example, the exciting conclusion of uh, a game show involving masked <laughs> singers where people need to know who Flamingo is. That is more truly dramatic, I think, in terms of uncertainty than the outcome here. For many Americans, it's true. Um, Mike Emanuel there, you cover the Hill. Uh, he's with us live, I believe, on Capitol Hill. Um, and Mike, there's been a lot of uh, guessing and prognosticating about whether there would be any crossovers, Republican or Democrats. I'm exactly trying to watch right. the vote here. Um, I don't see much crossover, if any, yet. We have one independent member, Justin Amash, who used to be a formerly a Republican. It looks like his vote will go to impeaching the president, uh, but Mike, any other chatter about other party members who may cross over tonight on this momentous vote? No, Shannon, what we're watching for is to see how many Democrats may vote no. We know that there were 31 Democrats from districts that President Trump won in 2016, and the question was whether a few of them may get a pass, if you will, to say you don't have to vote for it. You can save your neck, perhaps, by voting against impeachment. So we're watching to see if indeed there are more than a few Democratic no's, but uh, the outcome has never been in doubt. All day long we've been hearing passionate speeches for or against impeachment. You had the Majority Leader Steny Hoyer hold up Justin Amash, the former Republican turned independent, um, and then Adam Schiff closed for uh, the Democrats in the House, uh, not Speaker Pelosi. She started things off. Adam Schiff, the House Intelligence Chairman, wrapped the speeches for the day. And it was kind of interesting seeing that Schiff, someone who talked about Russian collusion for cu a couple of years, was made the face of this impeachment probe. Um, we'll have to ask Speaker Pelosi about that when it's all said and done. But we are watching to see if any Republicans say yes, if any Democrats vote no. And that's really the only drama left at this point. Yeah, and as we're looking at the vote, it looks like there is one no call, uh, vote in the column with Democrats. So it looks like one Democrat so far has stepped up to say no. When there are 400 plus members in the mix and this all happening at once, I believe it's a 15 minute vote series. It'll take a little time to get the names assigned to exactly what's happening here. Sure. Uh, so we'll continue to follow that. But Mike, I, I also was struck by the fact that Nancy. Pelosi, who is the Speaker of the House, who we know months ago was saying, listen, it's going to be so divisive for the country unless it's bipartisan. This is not a path we want to go down. There are worries about swing district Democrats who are forced to take a vote on this issue. Um, but interesting, as you brought up, that she wasn't there for the final closer tonight. She left that to the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Adam Schiff, who really has been point on this whole thing from the beginning. We thought a year or two ago, if this came to fruition, it would be the House Judiciary Chairman, Jerry Nadler, because that is usually where these articles are handled. Of course, that's where they formally come through. Um, but it seems like Adam Schiff has been the one to take the reins this entire time. Um, your thoughts, even though we're a little bit of uh, speculating and guessing at this point as to why the speaker herself did not uh, end that final wrap-up, the final argument before those votes started. Yeah, it was interesting because when she spoke on the floor about eight hours ago to tee things up, uh, she was wearing black and said it was a very somber occasion. Uh, she was very low key in terms of her remarks, not firing up the, the faithful. She was very kind of sober and calm about it. And then Adam Schiff, her fellow Californian, uh, she decided to make the face of this. Uh, someone who uh, has argued it as an attorney uh, was the face of the House Intelligence Committee hearings that we saw. Uh, took a lot of heat from Republicans, uh, took a lot of heat for 
paraphrasing the president's phone call with the Ukrainian leader from July 25th, and so really became quite a target. Uh, fascinating that the speaker allowed him to kind of wrap things up for the Democrats, uh, perhaps because she knew she didn't need the votes, and so she decided to give one of her guys, one of her lieutenants, uh, the opportunity. But uh, in prime time, he's the face of closing down this impeachment argument in the House. Mm -hmm. All right, Mike Emanuel, our chief congressional correspondent, stay there. We're going to come back to you. I want to bring in also Fox News senior Capitol Hill producer Chad Pergram for more analysis of the his historic vote. And Chad, you know the nuance, the technicalities of all, how all of this comes together. So as we're watching, I think it's about a 15-minute vote series, we said. I see now that there are two no votes from Democrats. We could speculate at this moment. You're a little bit closer to the action. You may have some names or some educated guesses about who that may be. Um, but we're creeping closer and closer to that number of 216 which would give them the votes to make this happen once those are officially locked in. Your thoughts over there on the Hill, Chad? We have names. Uh, Jeff Van Drew, who for the time being is still a Democrat. He's indicated that he's going to switch parties at some point, but has not done so yet. Uh, indicated to Fox earlier today that he would be casting his vote on impeachment as a Democrat. So that's one of the no votes. And the other no vote is Colin Peterson. He is a Democrat from Minnesota. Uh, he is the chairman of the Agriculture Committee. President Trump carried Colin Peterson's district in Western. Minnesota. It's a very rural district, runs from southern Minnesota almost at the Canadian border by an eye popping 31 uh, points. And so Colin Peterson is a no as well. Now, now, I'm looking at the monitor here off to the side. They're up to about 189 yeas. You talk about 216 being the magic number, Shannon. We actually think that the, the, the wheelhouse for impeachment passage will be more like 213, 214. The reason is because there have only been uh, 425 or 426 members. Voting earlier today in the House of Representatives. Uh, 216 is, is indeed the, the total magic number because the House only has 431 members right now. So that's the magic number. And, and, and again, whatever the chair announces, uh, Diana DeGette, a Democrat from Colorado, she has been sharing the debate all day. And, and what you see on the screen is not going to be official, but what the chair announces at the end. Uh, we wonder if House Speaker Nancy Pelosi uh, you know, might take the chair here. She did so back in October, on October 31st, when they actually approved the, uh, the, the resolution uh, you know, codifying the impeachment investigation. You know, Nancy Pelosi did so because she's the speaker, wanted to be part of this, and also kind of uh, set the mood, you know, making that announcement uh, from the chair. Now, as soon as they wrap this up, they will vote on the second article of impeachment. This one is abuse of power. The next one will be obstruction of Congress. And, and, and again, we, we think the vote tallies are going to be very similar here. Probably one deviation. Jared Golden is a freshman Democrat from Maine. He flipped a district from red to blue last year. He's probably one of the most vulnerable Democrats. And Golden indicated yesterday that he would vote yes on abuse of power and no on obstruction of Congress. That's a swing district. President Trump carried one of Maine's electoral votes in, in 2016. They allocate the Electoral College proportionally in Maine. And so we'll have the second vote there. The first vote always takes a little more time simply because it takes a long time to get 431 people in the same room. You ought to try that. And, and so it takes about, you know, they put 15 minutes up on the clock, but it's kind of like soccer. It really goes about 20 or 25 minutes, you know, injury and booking time at the end of the period there. The second vote is uh, booked for five minutes, but will probably take about seven or eight. The other thing that we don't know here, and according to the official schedule, is there is not a, uh, a, a third vote scheduled in this series. And that vote uh, would be where they actually vote to send the articles of impeachment to the House of Representatives, to, excuse me, to the Senate, and also uh, impanel the impeachment managers. These are the prosecutors who would present the, the case to the Senate, Shannon. And Chad, before we let you go, um, really quickly, I want to ask you about that vote to send this over to the Senate, because there's been some talk, some chatter, some discussion today about the fact that there are some in the House saying, we hold on to these for a minute while we figure out what's going to happen in the Senate. Any um, assessment that you get that that may actually happen and how that could play into this whole game of getting it to the Senate trial where there's almost no chance the president actually gets removed, but it is a very big part of this political fear, that next step. I was told earlier in the day that they thought they would do that, but according to the schedule, it's not on the docket here. The House could hold the piece of paper. You know, in 1998, with the impeachment of President Clinton, uh, they had that vote about 10 minutes later. And what they actually do, Shannon, when they do it, is they actually put the articles of impeachment in, in 
cherry boxes and walk them across. We're in Statuary Hall of the Capitol here, Hill uh, uh, of the Capitol right now on the House side, and they walk them from the House side of the Capitol to the Senate. And then the Senate, the only thing that they have to do is actually receive the articles of impeachment, read them aloud in the Senate chamber, and, and recognize the House impeachment managers, and that's all they have to do in the Senate. Now, I want to check here. We're almost on the precipice of that uh, vote tally here as I look at the scoreboard here. They're at 211. Uh, I don't think, unlike when a lot of measures pass in the House of Representatives, you usually hear a big cheer go up on big issues, on, on major issues like, like health care or tax reform or something like that. Uh, this is going to be a very somber moment, and they're almost on the precipice of that right now, passing uh, the ar first article of impeachment with President Trump. Yeah, and again, that one is on abuse of power. We'll await the second vote as well. Chad, thank you so much. We'll check back with you in sure. a little bit. Again, to uh, recap where we are right now, there are two articles of impeachment. The House now voting on the first one against President Trump, abuse of power. Uh, they are nearing the mark where they would have the votes to move forward. Uh, there are two Democrats who have crossed over to vote um, against this particular article. There is one independent, Justin Amash, who used to be a Republican, now an independent, has voted uh, yes on this to move forward. No Republicans yet as yes votes. I want to bring back in um, Fox News contributor Guy Benson as we have this discussion. Um, I got a text from someone today, very close to me. I won't out them, but they said, wait, is the president really getting impeached? And I said, yes, we're inside this bubble in the Beltway covering this all the time. And she said, well, can he run next year? And I said, yes, because now this goes to the Senate. There's actually a whole other step in removal. And for people who don't cover the twists and turns and minutia of this every day, it can seem a little bit overwhelming, like, oh, well, he's being voted out of office tonight. That's not what's happening. But for a lot of people, they're not following this as closely as Washington is. Right. So the House is controlled by the Democrats. They are going to impeach the president. They are one vote away now, basically, from doing that. There'll be another vote on the second article of impeachment. Then it will move over, as Chad alluded to, to the Senate, where you need 67 out of 100 Senate votes to remove a president from office. And based on all of the calculations, they're nowhere close. I'm not sure they'll have 47, let alone 67, to remove. So you will see, in all likelihood, almost certainly, an acquittal of the president on both counts, if you will. And then the question is, what does this mean politically from here? If the president is impeached and then acquitted, we're moving into a 2020 election cycle that is extremely hard fought. Is this something that will play in to 2020? Will it feel like a weird, distant memory by spring? I think there's a decent chance of that. And I think it's going to be fascinating to watch how these two parties move forward because my instinct is, and talking to people over on the Hill, the leadership in both parties, they're not sure how this plays politically. The polling has been split. It's been moving against impeachment over the last week or two. I think both leaderships of both parties want this over with in the rearview mirror, and then it will be a pivot hard to 2020. Looks like now we're at about 220 votes. Um, should those hold, and again, this is a, a formal process where they have to be locked in, that would be the impeachment of the President of the United States on this first one, that abuse of power articles. We'll wait to see if this is formalized here uh, as the ticks for yes continue to go up. Still no uh, Republicans, yes, a couple of uh, no Democrats uh, as we wait and watch on this. Um, Mike Emanuel over there on Capitol Hill, our chief correspondent there, congressional correspondent, I want to bring you back into this sure. conversation, Mike, because we're now almost certain with 100% certainty that this heads to the Senate. There's been a lot of back and forth about how the two sides come together, who sets the rules. We know the Chief Justice of the United States will be there once this trial starts to meet things out, to rule on motions, and to handle things as they come up. But first of all, the two sides have to sit down and set up some guardrails, some sure. rules for the trial. Um, the two sides, uh, the Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, Minority Leader Chuck Schumer, have been back and forth in the media, letters back and forth, but they haven't, as far as we know, sat down for a formal conversation. Conversation about this. They don't agree on much these days. How do you see that going now that we're setting up for a Senate trial? Well, Shannon, what's fascinating is watching the House all day long and seeing how frustrated Republicans are because Democrats have the votes. And so they have not been able to stop this impeachment of President Trump. Well, I think when it gets to the Senate, you're going to see the absolute reverse, where Majority Leader Mitch McConnell is calling the shots and Senate Democratic Leader Chuck Schumer is going to be frustrated. Schumer tried to do a preemptive strike, if you will, saying, I want to hear from four key White House officials when it comes to a Senate trial, including the acting White House Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney and also uh, several other key officials close to the president. Uh, McConnell so far is saying, I'm not really interested in that. And so he seems to hold the cards. There are questions about whether some Democrats from 
moderate states like West Virginia's Joe Manchin may vote with Republicans. And so whether McConnell may potentially have the votes pretty quickly to dismiss the articles of impeachment once it gets to the Senate. We know that the president's allies have talked about whether it's worth putting on a full-blown trial with a bunch of witnesses. But a lot of the key players in the Senate are saying they should just get rid of this as quickly as possible and move back to doing the business that the American people sent them here to do. And Guy made reference to a hard pivot. There's going to be a big pivot in the House of Representatives. They're going to go from impeaching the president tonight to voting on that big trade deal with Mexico and Canada tomorrow morning to try to show their constituents that they can walk and chew gum. Shannon? And get things done. Yes, they've been working on government funding. Uh, all of us know around here when it gets to the holidays and the closer you creep to Christmas, we're always talking about potential government shutdowns. It looks like for Mike on that front, for now, the funding is there. The movement is in both the House and the Senate heading to the president's table uh, to get a signature before we uh, get to that cliff, which seems to be how we handle funding these days, Mike. That's right. A gigantic Christmas tree right before Christmas. $1.4 trillion in spending. Some fiscal conservatives will vote no in the Senate tomorrow, but all indications are it will have the votes and the president is going to be willing to sign it to at least keep the government running through the rest of the fiscal year through September 30th. Okay, so Mike, we want to take another look at the board there as we're looking at the votes. Now, you see the time has ticked down. It's at zero on this vote, but people are still continuing to cast their votes. It is at 227 yay, which is well beyond what the House needs to formally impeach this president on Article 1, which is the abuse of power. So, barring any changes to those votes, even though the time is up, it looks like it is officially going to happen. This House, as we expected, has impeached the president, and they only had to do so on one article. They will go ahead and vote on the second one, which is obstruction of Congress. And then, should that one pass as well, they will both head to the Senate. So, as we wait for them to formally lock in, we still continue to see votes move now up to 228. Um, again, we do have, now have one Republican yes for impeachment. Uh, it will be interesting to figure out as we weed through these numbers and try to figure out who that one member is that appears to have crossed over. Um, we hadn't heard talk of any Republican publicly saying uh, that they were leaning in this direction. There's been speculation about a few. We'll continue to look at that. So two Democrat knows, one Republican yes. The independent Justin Amash, a former Republican, is a yes as well. I'm going to bring back Guy Benson on this. Um, as, as we talked about looking forward to how it works next year, the president is speaking at his his rally tonight. Should he address this? We'll, we'll take people there live so they can hear his side and his response. Because I imagine he's got a few things to say about what has happened today. In the meantime, though, he has long said that he thought this would help him. People have looked back to the impeachment of Bill Clinton when he was president. Again, similar scenario impeached in the House, no expectation he'd really be removed by the Senate. It didn't happen. They acquitted him. And then his party benefited. And there are a number of factors that could have come into that. Um, but we're, we're trying to look now in Parson and see how it would play for this president at this time. Well, this president will address the vote tonight, and he will address it and address it and address it again. I think the split screen that you're looking at right now, in some ways, those optics benefit him, to your point, where you have Washington, D.C., voting to impeach the president while he is, meanwhile, in a swing state, a crucial battleground that he won shocking a lot of people in 2016 where he would like to win again with a hall full of supporters who are cheering the Trump campaign earlier today circulating an image of a front page of a newspaper in Michigan on the left side of the paper front page was a story about impeachment on the right side was thousands of jobs coming back to the state I believe through Ford and they said, well, which of these things matters more to you? That was the Trump campaign's question. And they are hoping that a lot of Americans will say the jobs, the economy, et cetera. So I sort of come at this whole issue and have since the beginning as a Trump skeptical conservative uh, who's opposed to impeachment. I think the Democrats have some points. I think that there was misconduct on the president's part. I know that he likes to say everything was perfect. Nothing happened here that was wrong. I disagree with that. But one of the questions that has been asked over and over again by Republicans in the debate today is, is it the proper role right now for Congress to impeach and remove a president who is duly elected when 10 plus months from now mm -hmm. the people of this country will go back to the polls and decide whether this man deserves four more years mm -hmm. to remain president and keep the job that he was elected to? Why don't we let a first term president get reelected or not rather than going through this wrenching process that Speaker Pelosi did say mm -hmm. over and over again has to be bipartisan to be legitimate. It is very much not bipartisan, almost perfectly partisan, as you can see on your screen. Yeah, I'd mentioned there was, it, it appeared, one GOP vote, according to the scoreboard, that had gone up as a yes for impeachment. It has been taken off. Ah. We're told that that might have been a mistake. This happens on Capitol Hill, which is why it takes them a little time to lock this down, to formalize it, to make sure everybody has their votes in. So the numbers 
numbers are there if they're going to proceed with this abuse of power count. There is a second article that is uh, obstruction of Congress. Now, we've talked a lot about this. This is uh, the Democrats saying they asked for specific witnesses and documents, and the White House blocked them and did not turn them over. Um, Guy, you know, a number of these fights have gone to court. They are still pending there. Now, Democrats had said, we need these things. We need these documents. We need this testimony. The hearings aren't until January, but they're moving ahead with the vote, uh, still maintaining they need this information. Um, and they have said, a number of the leaders over there, I think of Congressman Eric Swalwell out of, of California, and of course the House Intel Chairman Adam Schiff as well, have both said, we have a presumption if you don't turn over witnesses or documents that they would be negative for the president, almost upending the idea of innocent until proven guilty. Um, but those things are still tied up in court battles. The Supreme Court has said it will actually take a case with respect to the president's tax returns and whether uh, lawmakers can get their hands on those. So it seems the Supreme Court, the judicial branch, is, is acknowledging there can be a difference of opinion. Maybe the court will be the way to solve some of these issues. Um, but in the meantime, they're moving forward without having what they told the courts they needed. Right, and they're not actually fighting in court to resolve that issue, right? As you said, the Democrats' position is if you're not going to give us what we want, we are going to assume that is tantamount to obstruction, and therefore we have another count of impeachment here, the second article that's going to be voted on. I think a lot of the legal scholars that I've been, I'm not a lawyer, but I've been reading a lot about this, interviewing a lot of smart people, there is a prudential question about whether the president abused his power and whether or not he did so in a way that is impeachable. I think those are two discrete questions. The obstruction of Congress, the second article, is seen as much weaker for the reason that you just outlined and articulated, Shannon, because the Democrats could have gone to the mats legally and fought for these subpoenas and then waited to see if the White House still said, forget it, we're not doing it, we don't care what you say, we don't care what the judiciary says, we are going to stonewall. That is not what has happened. That process has not been exhausted. And they're marking that up as one of their mm -hmm. articles of impeachment that I think is, is frankly uh, a bit weak. I will make one other point, because people tuning in who are just sort of following this uh, loosely, they may question, okay, abuse of power, what does that mean? One of the terms that was used repeatedly by Democrats for a few weeks, they got some polling back, mm -hmm. and they said quid pro quo was confusing to people. This was bribery on the president's part. That's an understandable crime. In the Clinton impeachment, there were crimes that were alleged from a special prosecutor, perjury, obstruction of justice, real crimes. Bribery would be such a crime, but it's it was named in the Constitution as one of the criteria yeah. potentially for impeachment. It was not included as one of the charges against President Trump. They went a little bit more vague and a little bit more narrow at the same time. And uh, clearly, it's a gamut that has worked, at least in terms of as we see Speaker Pelosi, who's taken the gavel, making this thing final. They've got their impeachment. Yeah, and she uh, had not voted. We knew that she was there in the chamber. She didn't make the closing argument, which was done by the House Intel Chair Adam Schiff, who's kind of been the point person on this. Um, you, she, so she says Article One is adopted. That is officially on the books. The president has been impeached on abuse of power. They are now going to move to that second count that we've been talking about, which is obstruction of Congress. Um, let's listen in a little bit and see uh, what's going on. Have it. The eyes have it. For what purpose does the gentleman from New York see the president? For what purpose I does the for gentleman? Madam Speaker, I ask for, for a roll. For what purpose does the gentleman from New York seek recognition? I ask for a roll call vote. A recorded vote is requested. Those favoring a recorded vote will still rise. That will be in order. A sufficient number have arisen. A recorded vote is ordered. Members will record their votes by electronic device. Is a five-minute vote. Okay, that was uh, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, who again we've talked about for months, indicated she did not want to take uh, the country down this path. She did not want to have to go down this uh, road that they have now gone down. She wanted it only done if it was bipartisan. And frankly, the only crossover votes tonight are by Democrats. Just a couple of them who voted no, including one member we believe is on the precipice of changing his party membership from Democrat to Republican. So now, um, I, I got to say, let me bring Mike Emanuel back in on this, our chief congressional correspondent. Mike, um, today and tonight, especially watching this play out, and it is an historic moment, is the most I've seen our 
our uh, legislative body look a little bit like Parliament with a little booing and backing right. forth of people who don't watch this and love C-SPAN as much as we do and watch this all the time. Uh, it's rather rare to get those big public reactions, but tonight a lot of back and forth as they head down this path, which is uh, entering the history books. Yeah, there's definitely a little bit of an Animal House feel on the House floor at this point with uh, the impeachment vote. Uh, Republicans have been very frustrated. They haven't been able to stop it. Uh, I would like to note that Tulsi Gabbard, a Democrat, voted present. Gabbard running for president seems to be running in the maverick lane of the Democratic Party, and so she butted heads with her House leadership and voted present on the first article. On the second article, we expect there may be a third no, perhaps more. Uh, Jared Golden, a Democrat of Maine, said he was going to split it, that he was going to vote yes on the first article, vote no on obstruction of Congress. We'll see how that plays out with his constituents back home in Maine. Uh, so that's something else to watch. Uh, it was interesting. There was some thought that Francis Rooney, a retiring Republican in Florida, may butt heads with his leadership and vote for impeachment. But Rooney threw cold water on that late in the day, saying he was a no on impeachment. And so it has been interesting. Sometimes Republicans splinter a bit, depending on where they are in the spectrum. But they've all held the line in terms of supporting President Trump and staying with their party leadership. So this is really a wholly partisan effort in the House of Representatives. And Mike, one of the things we've heard about as, as um, Guy and I were discussing the court battles that are not resolved uh, for material that the Democrats said they needed for purposes of the impeachment uh, inquiry, um, as they're moving forward, we've heard a lot in the last couple of weeks about urgency. We've heard a lot of the top Democratic leaders say that if this is not done now, the president will continue to do what they accuse him of, which is engaging in um, asking for foreign interference in the upcoming election, the 2020 election. Um, speak to that, you know, uh, what we've been hearing, this, this talking point now that it's about urgency, and that's why they're moving so quickly. Sure. Well, let's consider that this is about a phone call that happened July 25th. Then there was an announcement of an impeachment inquiry August 24th. You mix in all the congressional recesses throughout the fall, including Thanksgiving, and here we are a week before Christmas, and they're voting on impeachment. And so Republicans have been hammering away saying, what's the rush? Why are you rushing this? Why can't you just wait on the courts to see whether people like Mick Mulvaney, the acting chief of staff, should come up to Capitol Hill and testify, and whether former National Security Advisor uh, John Bolton should come up to Capitol Hill and testify. Bottom line is the Democrats did not want this to leak into a presidential election year, certainly not aware of what the political consequences could be. All of them are on the ballot in November, in addition to their presidential hopefuls. And so they wanted to tidy this up at the end of the year, go home with some uh, legislative accomplishments, including government funding through September, and also this trade deal with Mexico and Canada to say we can investigate and we can also legislate. Uh, bottom line, we will see what their constituents say when all these lawmakers get back home. Yeah. Okay, Mike, stand by. A guy, I want to bring you back in here because now we're talking about a Senate trial. We have one official article of impeachment. It's happened. The second one looks like it's headed down the same path. There is a split vote, as Mike was explaining, or Chad made the earlier about there was one Democrat who was going to split on these, vote for abuse of power, but not vote for obstruction of Congress. So now we kick into the Senate uh, and a potential trial. I had one top GOP senator tell me they think they could start this as soon as January 6th. Of course, there's a lot of fighting about will they call witnesses? How long will the trial last? There are number of senators, though, who are out running for the presidency. Mm -hmm. Iowa and New Hampshire hit early in February. That's going to be a very important time for them to be campaigning. Do they get stuck in a Senate trial where it's clear we probably know how they're going to vote? Many of them have been out there talking about the need to impeach this president. Um, but that takes them off the trail at a very important time. That's not lost on people like Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. There's going to be a lot of screaming over the next few weeks about process and fairness in the Senate. We saw that from Republicans in the House who were in the minority. They were very unhappy with the rules of this impeachment. They said the Democrats should have gone with the Clinton era rules and the Nixon era rules, which they didn't. Now the roles will be reversed. The Democrats will be the ones who are unhappy with how this is going because the Republicans are in control of the Senate. There's a few different schools of thought among Senate Republicans about what type of trial to do. Uh, Lindsey Graham, for example, a Republican from South Carolina, fierce defender of the president, he's saying, let's just dismiss this out of, out of hand, immediately dismiss the charges and move on.
There are other Trump loyalists who say, no, no, let's have a long trial. Let's call in all sorts of witnesses like Adam Schiff, chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, to talk about his relationship or his staff's relationship with the whistleblower. Let's hear from the whistleblower in this case. Let's hear from Hunter Biden, the former vice president's son, because that is part of the phone call that's sort of at the center of this Ukraine-related impeachment. And then there's the middle ground, sort of the Goldilocks position from the majority leader, Mitch McConnell, which I suspect will prevail, which is a week or two of trial, very similar rules to 1999 and Bill Clinton, and an acquittal at the end of that. Shannon, a few quick things I wanted to say that I thought were notable when Speaker Pelosi briefly addressed the chamber. When she gaveled in the final outcome, you could briefly see her look over at her side of the aisle and scowl and do a hand motion like cut it out. There were obviously some people cheering mm -hmm. or clapping. She had put out a, effectively a memo early in the day saying, this is solemn. Here's the memo, people. We're solemn. We're prayerful. We're not happy about this impeachment. A few people may have missed the memo. Uh, and I think that that was just interesting. She's trying to kind of enforce that mm -hmm. because that's, that's what they want to project. Those are the optics that they want mm -hmm. coming out of this, even as like a minor way to protect some of their moderates. The Republicans come back and say, this is not solemn. This is not mm -hmm sad. There are many Democrats, in fact, more than half of the House Democratic Caucus was in favor of impeachment before any of this Ukraine mm -hmm. stuff even happened over different issues. That was number one. Number two, there was a, a quick mistake actually made by Jerry Nadler, the Judiciary Ch uh, Committee chairman. He called for not just the yeas and nays where they all vote and they push their buttons and we see them populating the numbers. He called for a roll call vote, mm -hmm. which was every single person, their name would be called and they would have to say out loud what their vote was, which is what Republicans earlier today were asking for. They wanted the video mm -hmm. and the audio of each member of Congress going on That's the record that. about this, including some of those Trump district Democrats who won in 2018. They would love to have that footage, the Republicans would, because they think they can get some mileage out of that come election time. The Democrats had opposed that, they had defeated it, but Nadler sort of tripped up and said, I move for the, a roll call vote, and Pelosi cleaned up after him and said, no, no, we're going to do it mm -hmm. exactly this way. Yeah, and one of our um, producers who is down there, he said that apparently when the vote came through on the first uh, article on abuse of power to impeach President Trump, that there was some clapping by some Democratic members, and then there were Republicans who were booing them, and that's the point at which the Speaker was there uh, stepping up into position and, and trying to uh, quell the uprising of uh, emotion and the, the verbal response and things we don't usually see there on the House floor. I want to get back to Mike Emanuel there over on the Hill because it looks like, Mike, we're now at the numbers for impeachment on the second count as well. Uh, this one is the obstruction of Congress uh, that most people, pundits for or against doing this with the president, do think is the weaker of the two articles. Yes. But now it looks like it's officially on the board as well. Well, and that's why one of the Democrats voted no. Jared Golden of Maine voted yes on the first article. He voted no on this one because he said he thought the courts should be the ones to sort out this dispute between the executive branch, the White House, and the legislative branch, Congress. So he voted no on this one. Uh, the other two, we believe, Jeff Van Drew of New Jersey, who may not be a Democrat for much longer, and Colin Peterson, a conservative district uh, Democrat from Minnesota, those guys have been against impeachment from the beginning. Uh, Tulsi Gabbard, the presidential candidate, again, voting president on the second one. Otherwise, it looks like the same vote. Uh, no Republicans in favor. They're holding the line, defending President Trump and sticking with their GOP leadership. And Democrats in the one independent, uh, Justin Amash of Michigan, voting to impeach, as we saw in the first vote. Okay, so again, uh, it looks like the votes are there for impeachment on both counts. Uh, it is official that this House has now officially impeached President Trump. There will be a Senate trial, how that plays out, how long it lasts, whether there are witnesses or not, whether you see someone like Hunter or Joe Biden or Adam Schiff or Mick Mulvaney uh, or John Bolton. All of that has to be hammered out now. Over the holidays, at some point, the leaders in the Senate will have to come together to do that. Uh, and, Guy, what we've learned is that it basically takes 51 votes for them to decide how they're going to handle things in the Senate. Republicans have currently 53 members. There are a couple of though who are not staunch supporters of this president, not fans of what he does, don't always vote in line with the rest of the party. So they can really only afford to play with a couple of them there if they're going to try to nail down. And that's only if the two leaders can't work it out amongst themselves, Schumer and McConnell. Uh, otherwise, it would go to a vote of 51 uh, to put together some rules to start this thing. And those negotiations between McConnell and Schumer are off to an inauspicious start as they're sort of lobbing rhetorical bombs at each 
each other on the Senate floor over the last few days in anticipation of these new skirmishes, which I would imagine are very boring to most Americans, mm -hmm. but they have to set the rules for how they're going to have this trial. You're right, you need 51 votes or 50 plus one votes in the Senate to help establish the rules, but crucially, again, you need 67 mm -hmm. out of 100 to convict the president. That's not going to happen. Everyone acknowledges that. So we're sort of having a fight over a foregone conclusion, which I think is a bit anticlimactic, certainly, despite the historical nature of it. And you have to think also on the other side of the aisle. You're absolutely right. You think about maybe Mitt Romney from Utah, Susan Collins from Maine. A few of them come to mind. Lisa Murkowski yeah. sometimes from Alaska are willing to side with Democrats on important votes from time to time. Um, Romney has been relatively critical of this president on this issue in particular. However, in Chuck Schumer's Democratic caucus, there are some red state Democrats who do not seem like they're chomping at the bit to cross the president and his supporters on this. First and foremost, Joe Manchin of West Virginia. He looks like a no. Kirsten Cinema, who just won in Arizona, she's been very bipartisan so far. She's been wavering. She's one to watch. And then there's also Doug Jones, uh, a newly, relatively newly elected Democrat from Alabama, of all places. Sort of a, a fluke win for him. He's up for re-election next year. I guarantee you this, and he's not an a unintelligent man. Mm -hmm. If he votes to impeach President Trump or remove President Trump from office in Alabama, he will be former Senator Doug mm -hmm. Jones uh, if he's not already headed in that direction. So those are three names to keep in mind, in addition to the three on the other side, that could cross over and make things interesting. But ultimately, are they going to come within 20 votes of what they need to remove President Trump? Uh, Probably not, and they won't really be in the ballpark. So this is somewhat academic. It's, we're sort of fast forwarding. Sorry for the spoilers, everyone. We're just <laughs> we're fast forwarding to the end of the movie, which is we've now gotten the impeachments uh, settled, and up next is the acquittal. Mm -hmm. Well, and knowing all of this tonight, uh, Doug Collins, who's the ranking member on key, you know, key committees, the House Judiciary Committee, he had a fiery closing speech essentially for the Republicans, the final defense of the president tonight, and he talked about the fact that the president will still be the president when this is all over, and that there will be a lot of time and money that Congress has spent going down this path, and that that's where you lose a lot of the American people because um, it, many of them are frustrated, don't follow it like we do here in Washington, and say, why are we doing this when we know what the outcome will be? Uh, and again, Guy, you and I have talked about how the polling on this has shown mm -hmm. it's remained steady or moved away from impeaching the president as it's gone on. That's not what the Democrats would hope in putting on a case that they say they needed to gain bipartisan support so that the American people would be united behind them on doing this. The polling has not shown that. So now we head into a Senate trial that people will see as nothing but theater at this point because we know what the outcome is going to be. Barring some massive revelation of something that we don't already know that hasn't already been mm -hmm. uncovered. Um, so we'll wait to see. But in the meantime, there's going to be criticism of the Democrats for not uh, for doing this and going down this path. Although there are a number of members who stepped up to say, hey, this may even hurt me politically, but I believe this is the time, this is the principle, I'm defending the Constitution. Um, no matter how the rest of the country reacts to this, I'm doing what I think is right and how the history books will judge me. Our Fox News polling shows basically a public opinion unchanged uh, over the last few months on this. A number of other respected pollsters find uh, receding support for impeachment. We look at Gallup today, Quinnipiac, Monmouth, CNN's polling recently, and a few of them, opposition is now a majority. And in the real clear politics average, opposition to impeachment now slightly noses out mm -hmm. support. So it is right down the middle with Democrats losing steam, frankly, on this. And when you look at public opinion, you have a very solid group of people who say absolutely the president must be impeached and removed for this conduct. You have the president's base and many Republicans who say this is a sham and a witch hunt and a coup and all of that, and this should all be shut down immediately. There's nothing to it. Then there are millions of Americans in the middle, and I'm sort of among them, who say, no, this is a legitimate area of inquiry and oversight. The president did not behave perfectly. There are some problems here, but is it worthy of using this extreme measure, this nuclear option almost in Washington, of impeaching and trying to remove a president from office, especially with an election looming? Is that the right thing to do? And a lot of that middle ground group are breaking towards no. Let's not go for impeachment. And yet we see today, for a number of reasons, including the base and, and principle and what, uh, a few other uh, issues that I think would be cited. We see the Democrats in the House, at least, moving forward nonetheless. 
Yeah, and as we look at that vote, uh, we understand that Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard, a Democrat out of Hawaii, voted present on both of these articles. She is running for the Democratic nomination in 2020. She's been out there on the campaign trail. Uh, she's put out a statement about this, and she says, My vote today is a vote for much needed reconciliation and hope that together we can heal our country. Let's work side by side, seeking common ground to usher in a bright future for the American people, our country, and our nation. So, Mike, she is somebody who had uh, pushed for censure, something that would have been less than impeachment. Right. She didn't get much traction with that, and tonight she votes present instead of taking a side. Yeah, it sounds like she's trying to promote reconciliation, political reconciliation in this country, which may be desperately needed after this impeachment process. Uh, she's saying she's making a stand for the political center in this country. So, question whether that becomes. Tulsi Gabbard, independent candidate for president, or whether she stays in the Democratic lane, but more of a centrist Democrat. So, uh, an interesting take on her part, uh, not wanting to just go along with Speaker Nancy Pelosi and some of the more liberal voices who are running for president who are saying impeach, 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 but also not voting no to vote with the Republicans. And so, uh, she, she voted present. There you go. Yeah, and she has taken a lot of heat from many in the Democratic Party who have uh, labeled her sort of a traitor and accused her of mounting or getting ready to a third party run. Let's check in now the House Speaker Nancy Pelosi after the second vote on the second article for impeachment. Article 2 is adopted. Yeah, and you heard there she says Article 2 is officially adopted, meaning both articles of impeachment against the president have been approved by the House. Took a majority vote. That has happened. You heard as she gaveled there, there was a, a yay uh, of yelling. She tried to stop that because, again, they have been communicating this is a very somber moment. Um, but they, both people, people on both sides of this have been very passionate, very riled up. So we are going to watch uh, as this unfolds now. The House will still have to formally vote to send these articles of impeachment over to the Senate. That will then take you to a Senate trial we think will probably be in January. That will be a whole new ball game. In the meantime, enjoy your holidays. Analysis continues on Fox News Channel, on cable and satellite. More later on your local news on this Fox News station. It is official. President Trump has been impeached on two articles. That's it for us from here in Washington. I'm Shannon Bream. This has been a Fox News special report.